This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Good morning, family. My name is Kenneth Deacon Kenneth Bigelow of Cornerstone Fellowship Baptist Church Deacon's Ministry. Today I'm here to welcome you to this virtual experience today. Our pastor, the Reverend Dr. Donnelly Dunning, and First Lady Regina Dunning also welcomes you to this experience. So let's sit back and enjoy what we are about to receive. Praise the Lord, everybody. You ought to clap your hands and give God glory this morning. He's a great God. God is great and greatly to be praised. Glory, glory to His name. God is great and greatly to be praised. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Come on, God is great. God is great and greatly, and greatly to be praised. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Come on, I will bow. 
again. We here at Cornerstone Fellowship Baptist Church are trying to prepare dynamic, healthy, dynamic disciples. We also have a motto. We love, we care, we share. It's a family affair. So right now I would like to ask you to bow your heads for our invitation. Father God, we come to you this morning thanking you, praising your name, Lord God. We ask that you bring us salvation this morning, Lord God, because we are about to go through a virtual experience from our pastor, Reverend Dr. Donald E. Dunnigan Sr. Lord, bless him today. Give him a word from on high that it may bring joy to the hearts of those who are listening. Father God, also, please bless our sick and our shedding. Bless those that are grieving today, Lord God. Touch their hearts. Give them peace. Give them joy. Give them understanding. But most of all, Lord God, give them love. These things I ask in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, oh, oh. 
wounds, uh, I encourage you to just begin to open up your mouth and just begin to magnify the name of the most holy God. He's the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Uh, come on, he says he inhabits the praises of his people, and so you ought to build God right there, a house in your house. That's right. If you begin to release hallelujah, and you begin to release Lord, I love you. If you begin to tell him, Lord, I thank you, and Lord, I praise you, I promise you he'll fill your home, he'll fill your kitchen, your living room, your bedroom, wherever you are, even those of you that are watching at work uh, right now, I tell you, he'll fill your office and your cubicle, and if you just begin to open up your mouth and say, God, I give you glory, God, I give you praise, uh, Lord, we love you and we magnify your name, come on, hallelujah to the King of Kings, uh, hallelujah to the Lord of Lords, uh, hallelujah to the great I am, you're the Prince of Peace, and we acknowledge uh, your sovereignty right now uh, and we thank you and we give you glory we give you glory it is an honor to stand right here again behind this sacred desk. I give honor to our senior pastor, the Reverend Dr. Donald E. Dunnigan, and his beautiful wife, our first lady, Lady Regina Dunnigan. And I thank you guys for the opportunity of ministering the word again right here at Cornerstone Fellowship Baptist Church. And so we are excited about what God is doing, even in the midst of everything that's going on. We keep our eyes focused on Jesus because we know that he is our keeper and our sustainer and because of him we will make it through anything that's right you ought to just type that in the screen because of Jesus I can make it through anything before we break into the word let's open up our mouths and just begin to go before the Lord in prayer father in the name of Jesus we come to you right now giving you glory and honor this day, O oh God. Praising your name for all that you've said and all that you've done, God. We give you all the glory and all the praise and all the honor because it's due unto you, God. Father, we bless you and we thank you for your peace and your patience and your protection and your provision, O oh God. God, we thank you for your joy that has been with us in the midst of sorrowful times, God. We thank you for the blood that's been watching over us and keeping us. Uh, we thank you that the blood has washed us uh, and purified us. And God, we thank you for Calvary this morning and what it represents and the work that it's doing in our hearts and our minds and our souls uh, even right now. So Father, we come uh, asking you to forgive us of everything that we've said and done, Lord God. Uh, we want to be hidden behind the cross right now in the name of Jesus God because we do not want anything to separate us from you so, Lord, we repent and say, purify us. Uh, make us white as snow in the name of Jesus, O oh God. Uh, don't take your spirit from us this morning morning, oh God. Don't take your joy from us this morning, oh God. Don't take your presence from us right now, God. God, we need you more than ever before. And so, Father, we call on the name of Jesus. We call upon the name that is above every name. We lift up our hands and say, Jesus, come see about us. Jesus, we give you permission and authority to begin to move in our homes right now. Jesus, we give you permission and authority to begin to touch our children right Right now, Jesus, we give you permission and authority to begin to bring in to bring peace uh, in America right now in the name of Jesus. Uh, you, Lord God, can be Lord God, the voice that calms the waters uh, and the winds and the waves. Uh, and so we trust in you, O oh God, uh, and we give you glory. Now, Father, we pray that you release the anointing that makes preaching easy, O oh God, uh, that you begin to speak to us right now in this moment, that we hear your voice and we harden not our hearts uh, the day that we hear your voice, oh God. Uh, Lord God, speak now. Uh, begin to break up the fallow ground. Uh, begin to purge the atmosphere, oh God. Uh, begin to break up every yoke and destroy every chain uh, and every mind-blinding spirit that the enemy will try to release to your people to cause them to be in confusion and cause us to be in bondage uh, and cause us to be in despair and cause us to be in depression. Uh, right now, in the name of Jesus, we call on your name, God. God, and we expect you to move. We expect you to deliver. We expect you to touch lives. And we expect you to save souls. In the name of Jesus, God, we give you the glory and the honor. And Lord God, we say yes to you right now that you would do what you want to do in this moment. 
and that you would be glorified, your people would be edified, and the kingdom of darkness would be destroyed. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 God is worthy of the praise. I am excited about what God is doing and what he's saying to us in this season. And so I was talking to my wife, Reverend Ashley, the other night. And uh, during our conversation, she started talking up to me, and we were reminiscing about, uh, as they say, days of old. And we were talking about our, our, our old pastor. He's retired now, uh, Bishop J.A. Jones. Uh, and he used to always begin to tell us and instruct us to never leave before the benediction. He would always say, stay until the benediction. And one day he did a teaching, and it really just changed my life. And so as we were having that conversation, conversation, it made me jump up and open up my Bible to Jude chapter 1 verses 24. And as I began to read it, it I began to think about the times that we have been living in and how uncertain these times are and how turbulent these times are and how questionable these times are. And as we begin to close out the first month of this year, there are so many uncertainties based on what we have already encountered. It seems like 2021 has just begun to be 2020 part two. And I know that when we walked into 2020 last year, we never thought that we would be looking at you, looking back at us uh, as we looked at the word through a computer. Come on here, somebody. And so some of us have been worried about how we will make it through this year when we feel like we barely made it through last year, but I've come this morning to encourage us, and I've come to encourage us not to give up, not to throw in the towel, and don't even click off of the service just yet, because there is a blessing in the benediction. That's right, there's a blessing in the benediction. You ought to text somebody right now and tell them to join us right here at Cornerstone Facebook, uh, 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 um, Cornerstone Fellowship Baptist Church. It's not Cornerstone Facebook Baptist Church, but that's the times that we are living in. We have in church on Facebook and church on YouTube, but you ought to tell them to come and join us right here on YouTube because there is a blessing in the benediction. Things may not be going the way you want them to go, but maybe God doesn't need them to go your way. Things may not be going the way you want them to go in your home. Things may not be going the way you want them to go on your job. Things may not be going the way you want them to go in your finances and things may not even be going the way that you want them to go here at the Cornerstone Fellowship Baptist Church but God said something to me he said maybe in order for me to accomplish what I need to accomplish things don't always have to go your way and so he said what I need you to do is understand that I am sovereign and I know what it's best and so because of his sovereignty we have to hold on until the benediction come on here somebody. Even when God's process makes us uncomfortable, and even when it doesn't align with our traditions, our ideas, and our thought process, we cannot forsake what God has called us to. We have to stay the course. The last time I was up here, I told you to keep your focus, and so this time that I'm up here, I'm telling you to stay the course, because we need to understand that there is a blessing in the benediction. And so I've come to again encourage us this morning not to give up. Don't throw in the towel. Don't click off. Don't move out of where God has positioned you. Stay the course because there is a blessing at the end of this. Let's jump into the scripture really quickly. We're looking at Jude chapter 1 verse 24 and 25 and the scripture reads like this it says now all glory to God who is able to keep you from falling away and bring you with great joy into his glorious presence without a single fault all glory to him who alone is God our savior through Jesus Christ our Lord all glory all majesty power and authority are his before all time 
and in the present and beyond time. And the scripture says, amen. So as I was reading this scripture, I realized that even we normally traditionally read this scripture at the end of a service because we include it in our benediction. And so as I was reading this scripture, I realized that there is even a plan from God in the benediction. It is a plan and a blessing to keep you even while you are going through what you are going through. There is a blessing in the benediction for you not to fail. There is a blessing in the benediction for you to have great joy. There is a blessing in the benediction to bring you into the presence of God. When we look at the word benediction, it literally means to utter or bestow a blessing. The benediction is a state of being blessed. That's right. And so when somebody releases a benediction over your life, they are releasing a blessing to you so that you can carry it with you on your journey. And so we are always at the end of the service when we receive the benediction. And so the benediction is the seal that will carry you on the journey and the trials that you may experience until we meet again. We gave a benediction back on in March in 2020, and we didn't realize that it would still be another year and some change before we would begin to see each other again. But that benediction is still carrying you. But again, many times we don't stay to the end of a season because we don't like something. We leave before the benediction. And when you leave before something is over, simply because we don't like it or simply because it's not going our way or it's not going the way that we're used to it going, we either, we either take the position to fight or we take flight. And some of us have been trying to leave the situations and circumstances before God has given the benediction. You ought to tell yourself, don't leave before it's over. Over. Don't leave before it's over. Why? Because there is a blessing in the benediction. It's not over yet, so you need to hold on until the benediction. The benediction is intended to bless you again as you go on your journey. So let's look at this scripture and begin to break down the plan of blessing in God's benediction. Maybe it can encourage you not to give up and to begin to wait until the end of this season. Don't throw in the towel yet. Don't give up your assignment yet. Don't don't give up on your marriage yet. Don't give up on your children yet. Don't give up on your job yet. Hold on until God releases the benediction. So here we are in Jude chapter 1 verse uh, 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 24. It gives clear instruction, okay? And so the first instruction that I want us to take from this scripture is to rest, all right? It says, I want you to rest. And so it's right here in the scripture. You might have missed it, and you may be saying, Reverend Collier, I don't see that anywhere in the scripture. So show me where it says this. Let me show you. Right here in Jude chapter 1, verse 24, it says, Now all glory unto him who is able. That's right. The truth of God's ability is the foundation for you to rest. That's right. You can rest in the ability of God because you can build your life on the fact that God is able. When you begin to understand the magnitude of who God is, you will learn how to rest in his ability. You will not keep searching here and there and to and fro and allowing yourself to be worried or confused or befuddled by the circumstances that you are under when you realize that he is able. You must rest in the ability of God. There is grace for you in the ability of God. You may not know how, you may not know when, but you must know that God is able. You may not understand when this season will be over and the time will go back to what it used to be or what it's going to look like when God establishes things. But what you must know is that God is able. It's the ability of God that will keep you surviving. That's right. As long as God is able, you will survive. As long as God is able, you will be all right. Let's keep breaking this thing down because I got to keep on moving because I don't want you to abort the blessing because you leave before the benediction. There is strength in the benediction. It says it again right here in the scripture. So not only is God able 
God will give you strength. It says, now all glory unto him that is able to keep you from falling. If the ability of God can keep you from falling, then that means that it is strong enough to keep you standing. Only strong stuff can hold you up. That's right. Only things that are strong has the ability to keep you standing. And so not only is God able, but there is strength in the benediction. And so before you get out of this season, not only are you going to realize that God is able, but you are going to realize that God is strong enough to keep you from falling. It, I've come to encourage you this morning that God God is about to hold you up. Now all glory unto him that is able to keep you from falling. Don't give up because God is going to hold you up. You've been in a season of grieving, but God is holding you up. You've been worrying about money, but God's been holding you up. You've been trying to figure out if you should go out to the store and if you're going to get sick when you go to the market, but you don't have to worry because God is holding you up. You've been dealing with sicknesses in your body and sicknesses in the land and sicknesses is in your family, but God is holding you up. Some of you are perplexed about falling into old situations and circumstances, but God is holding you up. And so you have to rest and understand that God is able and he is strong. That's right. That ought to encourage you to stay in the fight because he's able and he's strong. So you must not forget that God is able and we have to be grateful for the ability of God and we have to be grateful for the strength of God. So let's keep moving. It says, now unto him who is able to keep you from falling. So not only is God able, not only is he strong enough, but he has the ability to keep you. I know that there are some people out there that have the testimony of oh to be kept by Jesus. How many of you can testify that God has kept you? It's been Jesus that's been keeping you. Jesus is your anchor. Even though the devil and his agents have tried it over and over, it's Jesus that is keeping us. And so you can rejoice right there this morning because God is keeping you. And so we are grateful because God is able, he's strong, and he's a keeper. Now I could stay right there, but I'm going to move to the next part because I don't want you to miss the whole blessing. It says, now all glory unto him who is able to keep you from falling. And so the last time that I was talking to you, I was talking to you out of the text when Peter began to step out on the water and when he took his eyes off the Jesus, he began to fail. But before he drowned, Jesus put his hand and lifted him up in that same strength that God and Jesus gave to Peter. That same strength is being released unto you. And so you have the ability to step out on faith because God won't let you fall. You have the ability to do what God is telling you to do because he will keep you from falling. No matter the circumstances in your life, people may laugh at you, but God's going to keep you from falling. People may ridicule you, but God's going to keep you from falling. Do what God told you to do. Go where God told you to go. Build what God told you to build. Say what God told you to say. Don't change who you are to try to fit people. Stay in the course of what God has instructed at you for your life because he has the ability and the strength to keep you from falling. You will not fail. You will not fall in this season if you stay the course with Jesus. So I want to encourage you that there is a blessing in the benediction. So not only is God able, not only will he be your strength, not only will he keep you from falling, but it says that he will give you what? Not just regular joy, he will give you great joy. It says now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and bring us into the presence of God with great joy. And so I just came to tell you something really quick. Baby, you've been upgraded. That's right. Not only are you going to get joy, but you're going to have great joy. It's not going to be regular joy. It's going to be supernatural joy. It's going to be the joy that the world didn't give and the world can't take it away. It's going to be joy releasing your house, okay? And let me tell you something. I remember one time, you all know that I've been going on a journey trying to lose weight and thanks be unto God, this year I've lost 203 pounds. But I had started this journey a long time ago. And so one time there was a season of my life where 
I really couldn't fit on the airplane. And so I got on the airplane. I'm just going to be transparent. And I had made a decision that I was going to lose weight so that I can go and do the ministry that God had called me to do. And so I got on the plane and I was still a little bit too big and I needed to buy the seat that was next to me. And so the person that was sitting next to me was bothered because they didn't want to sit next to this big fat man on this airplane. And so they began to complain. And so in the midst of my season of trying to pursue what God was telling me to pursue, I was making improvements on myself, but I hadn't got there yet. But some of us are in a season and you haven't got there yet. And so people are still trying to ridicule you by what they see going on in your life. And so they called the stewardess. And so the stewardess saw how uncomfortable I was. And so what ended up happening was they made the person stay in their seat and they upgraded me to first class. Not only did they upgrade me on that ticket, they upgraded my whole round trip tight, uh, my whole round, round trip trip. So no matter what season you're in, so not only was I excited, I had great joy. And so I came to tell you that the joy that God is about to release to you is great joy. Unspeakable joy. Joy that cannot change no matter the circumstances. You ought to just lift your hands and say, thank you, God, for upgrading me. Now, there is a formula for you to get this strength and this ability and this blessings. So let me tell you what the formula is. It says, now all glory be unto him. So in order for you to get this ability, this strength, this great joy and the uh, ability to be kept, you got to give God glory. That's right. I want you to begin to open up your mouth right there and begin to give God the glory that's due his name. The only way that you can rest in the blessing of the benediction of your life is if you learn how to give God glory. Give him glory in all seasons. When things are going right and things are going wrong, you got to give God glory. When you are well and when you are sick, you got to give God glory. When you are looking up and when things look like they're going down you have to give God glory right now where you are going through and what's going on in your life you are to give God glory and so I want you to lift your hands and begin to lift your voice and begin to release glory in your house glory is exuberant praise glory is magnified declarations glory is bigger than yourself glory is the ability to magnify situations above yourself and so I want you to magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Come on, give him glory, give him glory, give him glory. Come on, give him glory, give him glory, give him glory. Give him glory right there. Hallelujah. 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 I, I, I'm running out of time, but I, 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 I got to get this to you and I want you to have clear understanding that glory is due unto God at all times. Let's look back at the text, and then I'm going to close. I'm going to close for real, okay? Let's look back at uh, Jude chapter 24. It says, now all, chapter 1, verse 24, now all glory to God who is able to keep you from falling. Now let's jump down to 25. It says it again, all glory to him alone who is God. So God wants you to understand that the glory is due to him at all times because he alone is God. He alone is the one that's going to work it out for you. He alone is the one that's going to bless you. He alone is going to work this situation. He alone is going to keep us through this year. It is if we keep our focus on him and we consume ourselves with the glory of God, we will coast through 2021 just like God kept us through 2020. And he'll keep you through 2022 and 2023 as long as you understand that glory belongs to God, I encourage you right there to lift your hands and give God all of the glory. So when we are looking at our call to action this week for your life, I want you to give God glory. Like I said before, glory means to praise, honor, and to create a distinction extended 
to what you are trying to give glory to. And so when I'm talking about glory, there needs to be a distinction between the way that you shout for a football game and the way that you shout for the glory of God. And so I want you to begin to make a distinction in your time, a distinction in your life that you are going to give God glory. You are going to put a line in the sand and say, at this time of the day, I'm going to open up my mouth and begin to give God glory. And when you do that, I promise you that the grace and the strength and the ability of God is going to be released over your life. And not only will you receive the grace, the strength, and the ability of God, you will receive that upgraded joy. And so you have to say, I need to give God all the glory. Even right now, when you think about the word glory, when you break it down, even in the Hebrew text, the Hebrew says that glory means weight. That means you need to give God a heavy praise. It means that you need to give him a heavy worship. It means that you need to give him a, a real, real intense hallelujah. Right now, I want you to just practice for what you're going to do tomorrow. I want you to just open up your mouth and from the depths of your belly, begin to shout hallelujah. That's right. Come on, let out a cry and shout unto God with the voice of triumph. Uh, come on, release glory right there. Release glory in your homes. Uh, release glory over your life. Uh, release glory over your mind. Father, we bless you and we give you glory. Father, we magnify you and we give you glory. Father, we exalt you and we give you glory and we lift you up and we magnify you. You are the King of Kings and you are the Lord of Lords and you are the great I am. This is just me giving them glory. Father, I thank you for keeping me. Father, I thank you for keeping my wife. Father, I thank you for keeping my children. Father, I bless you for provision. I bless you for a roof over my head. I bless you for clothes on my back. I bless you that you kept me strong even when I was sick, oh God. And I bless you that I'm healed because of the blood. I give him glory. Come on, open up your mouth. Open up your mouth. I know this is not usual, but we might as well give him the glory that's due his name. You ought to dig deep within yourself and begin to give him a weighty praise. That's right. Make it heavy. Make it heavy. Oh, open up your mouth and give him glory. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God because he's worthy of it. And so when you are walking and you are exercising and when you are in your car, you ought to just roll up the windows and just begin to give them a weighty praise. That's right. Give them a heavy praise. That's what glory is. It means weighted praise and weighted distinction, okay? It's not just the usual clapping of your hands and just the usual thank you. When I open up my mouth, my intention is to give God glory. People say, why are you always so loud and why are you always always jumping around. It's because I was created to give God glory. I'm a glory carrier. Oh, you ought to put that in the comments right there, that I'm a glory carrier. You ought to get a t-shirt and write it on your uh, chest so that people know who you are. I'm a glory carrier. When you see me, you're going to encounter the glory of God. Uh, no matter the tribulation in my life, I'm going to see the glory of God. Uh, no matter how people are talking about me and trying to scandalize my name uh, and trying to use things to deceitfully uh, attract me up. I'm going to give glory to God. No matter when I'm sick in my body and my money looks funny and I don't feel like it, I'm going to give glory to God. Why? Because I was created to give him glory. I'm a glory carrier. And you begin to release glory in your home and begin to re release glory in your street. We will see glory take over Wilmington. Come on, somebody. We ought to start a glory revival. In the book of Acts, the Bible said they met from house to house. Uh, we can't come into the building, but you can release glory in your house. Uh, maybe God shut the doors of the building so that he can get a revival going on in your street. Uh, maybe he wanted revival to hit your house and hit your living room. Uh, and the first way for you to get revival is to open up your mouth uh, and begin to give him glory and he'll keep you from falling and he'll bring you into his presence with that upgraded great joy and he'll be your sustainer and he'll be your peace my God I feel like preaching this morning because I want you to understand that glory will change your life glory will shift things in your favor glory will push the devil back off of your family glory will push things into order when stuff gets chaotic when you learn how to get outside of yourself and give God glory 
uh, the glory of God uh, will begin to release his blessings uh, and his favor. You give him glory, he'll exalt you. You give him glory, he'll heal you. You give him glory, he'll turn it around for you. You give him glory, he'll pay your bills. Uh, you give him glory, he'll release favor that no man can take from you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah to your name, oh God. This was supposed to be the call to action, but I just demonstrated to you what you should do with that glory. And so those of you that may be watching this and you say, I don't know what that man is up there yelling about. Because you may not have a relationship, a personal intimate relationship with Jesus but this is what Jesus will do he will give you the type of joy that is unspeakable that when you begin to think about him it will just begin to consume everything about you in your life and so I want to invite you into a personal relationship with Jesus if you do not know Jesus I give you permission to just right there in that in those comments in our live chat say I want a relationship with Jesus and our uh, uh, our team team of altar counselors will get to you and give you instructions on how to lead people into how to lead and let Jesus into your heart and so if you just repeat this prayer after me and say father forgive me for I know that I am a sinner and I cannot save myself I believe that you died on the cross for my sins and you were raised on the third day and I invite you into my heart to be my Lord and my Savior write my name in the Lamb's book of life and from this day I confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord and Savior of my life in the name of Jesus we pray amen if you pray that prayer heaven is rejoicing with you heaven is rejoicing because you have found your way home and the strength and the ability and the blessing of the benediction will be upon your life uh, the blessing that you need for the journey that you are already on God's been keeping you but now you want to know who's been keeping you and we welcome you into the arms of Jesus family before we go, we just want to say thank you to all of our faithful members. You all have been faithful in your giving, and we are so grateful for what you have done and how you have stood by and supported your church sacrificially in the midst of this pandemic. And so it is time for us to bring our tithes and offerings into the storehouse. Uh, on the screen are the three ways that you can give. You can give via our PayPal on our website at Cornerstone. Um, uh, dot org. All of that information is on the screen. You can give via Givelify, and you can also send in your checks in uh, our P.O. box. As I said, all of that information will be on the screen so that you can give. And so those of you that are watching us for the first time, we invite you to sow seed into your own life uh, because when you give, it will come back to you in good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. The Bible says God will cause men to give unto you and so we are inviting you to sow seeds into your own life right here this morning at Cornerstone Fellowship Baptist Church and so we are so grateful for all of you all tuning in this Sunday to understand that there is a blessing in the benediction and because there's a blessing in the benediction I'm going to release the benediction so that you can uh, uh, go with the word of God and be encouraged for your journey that God is going to keep you because he's able and he's strong and he's going to bring you into his presence uh, with great joy that's right you get an upgraded joy some of you have been wondering when your joy was coming God was upgrading you you had one level of joy but God's about to give you another level of joy not just regular joy but he said great joy and I know God he's intentional about what he says and so if all hearts and minds are clear let's say this benediction now all glory to God who is able to keep you from falling away and to bring you with great joy into his glorious presence without a single fault all glory to him who alone is God 
our Savior through Jesus Christ, our Lord. All glory, majesty, power, and authority are his before all time and in the present. And so, Father, we thank you and we give your name praise. We ask that you, Lord God, go with us and keep us, that we uh, never leave your presence, that we invite you to stay with us and you be our peace and our strength. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. God bless you and we love you. Thank you again for tuning in to Cornerstone Fellowship Baptist Church virtual worship experience. We want to see you next Sunday. That's right. Matter of fact, we want you to like, share, and subscribe. That's right. Hit that subscribe button if you're not a subscriber to this channel and you will get regular updates about every time that we are logging in and jumping to give you fresh word and content. And so like, share, and subscribe our YouTube channel. Go ahead and share it to your Facebook um, family. You can hit the link that says share and you can text this message to somebody via your cell phone. It's all in your hands to spread the word and evangelize the world it's as we like are in a virtual season. And I know it's different. I know that it's been a, a, a lot of changes going on, but God is able to keep us from falling and he's going to bless us. God bless you again and Nothing go in, in this world will satisfy Jesus, you're the cup that won't run dry. Your presence is heaven to me. Oh God. Treasure.